Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Gold, joining you at the start of another week. We can put the Manchester City game, the result, the performance behind us and concentrate on another week. We've got a busy week coming up as well. Arsenal back in Europa League action on Thursday night. I'll be speaking to Mikel Arteta and a player on a Wednesday ahead of that match. Obviously, I'll be popping on here to update you of everything that happens from that pre-match press conference ahead of Arsenal's game in Austria on Thursday night against Rapid Vienna and then it's a big big game on Sunday back in the Premier League against Leicester so no time to cry over spilt milk and to really worry too much about what happened at the weekend yes Arsenal lost for the second time in the league this season but I do think some of the reaction has been a little bit over the top so I'll start off this video just talking about that just kind of putting that Man City game to bed and then focus on what could be to come as usual at the start of this video one of these videos just saying thank you to everyone for your continued support. Thank you for the likes, the subscriptions, the comments. Uh, please do continue to do all that. Obviously, YouTube likes it. That's what I'm always told to say um, in terms of the old algorithm. Not that I understand it at all, um, but please do keep hitting the uh, like button if you like what you see. And if you're new to this channel, like I said, I am the Arsenal correspondent for Goal, and I try and do as much as I can to keep you as updated on all things Arsenal as well possible right let's quickly get to that Man City game obviously I touched on it all immediately after the match with my player ratings and match review but I just wanted to talk on the main kind of talking point from it the, the Willian decision it, it's a big sort of gamble really from Mikel Arteta an experiment um, but it was a mistake I think you have to say it was a mistake um, as I said in that video I posted on Saturday night after the game I spoke to Mikel um, asked him for his opinion on the whole Willian experiment, why he played in there, how he thought he did. He said he thought he did all right. Um, he just felt it was a game for him, but I think it was an error. Um, you have to say that it didn't work, um, and hopefully it's something we're not going to see too much of in the future. I think Arteta just tried to outthink Pep a little bit. The two of them, they know each other so well. Um, it's always one of them trying to outfox the other. I think all week they're probably thinking about what can they do that the other one wouldn't have been expecting. And I'm pretty sure Pep wouldn't have been expecting Arsenal to start with Willian at false nine. So Arteta went with it. He tried to throw Pep off. Didn't quite work out, um, unfortunately, for Arsenal. Unfortunately for Mikel Arteta. Um, so I do think it was a mistake. Um, and hopefully I'm not going, we're not going to see too much more of Willian as the false nine. Willian coming in for a bit of grief at the moment from a lot of you guys. Um, can kind of understand it. He hasn't lived up really to that first game after that first game when he was excellent at Fulham. Hasn't really lived up to that expectation since, but I still think um, he's going to prove to be a decent sign in for Arsenal. Still created more chances than anyone else for Arsenal this season. Uh, not that that's saying much because he's only, he's only uh, created seven chances in the Premier League, which isn't great. And that's uh, kind of a big problem that Arsenal need to fix in terms of sh chances created and shots on goal. Um, so that's the, the main sort of talking point from the Manchester City game yes it was frustrating yes it was a defeat but I don't think they did too badly Arsenal you can always go up there and get mauled pretty much concede three goals at bare minimum normally at the Etihad they didn't do that they were in the game throughout just didn't couldn't quite take that next step to get the equaliser and uh, and get a point but I don't think it was too bad I think some of the reaction to it is a little bit been over the top I have to admit um Right, now let's talk about Thomas Partey. Came on right at the end of that game against Manchester City. A few people disappointed he didn't start. I thought he might, but I'm not. I mean, look, it's no big surprise. He only had one full training session really ahead of that Manchester City game. Interesting to see if he starts on Thursday night. I think he probably will. I think it'll be interesting that because what you want to, you probably want to start him against Leicester at home in the Premier League on Sunday. But do you want to give him like 60 minutes kind of in the Europa League before that just to get him up to speed? Possibly so. So it'll be interesting to see that starting level. I'm looking forward to it as well, the Europa League um, yeah, the group stages. Can't wait to see the likes of Smith Rowe, uh, who is fit, back in training. And I'm hopefully we're going to see him quite a bit in the group stages. Players like that are going to be good to see because I've got a lot of time for Emil Smith Rowe. I think he's a very, very good player. And uh, he could be one of the guys who comes in and kind of has a bit of a breakthrough season this season. Um, but Thomas Party, yes, I think um, I, I've got a feeling we might see Party start on Thursday night just to get some game time under his belt with Arsenal and uh, just continue that adjustment of uh, life at his new club. Mikel Arteta spoke about Thomas Party afterwards, said, we'll see how quickly we can make it with him. I think we have to respect that process and the timing for him because he only trained for a day, really, and there's a lot of new information um, 
and different game models for him to understand. We have to respect that. Um, that's what he said after the game against Manchester City with Thomas Partey. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we'll see Arsenal's new 45 million man from the start on Thursday night. I think he will make a big, big difference. Rob Holding didn't make it into the game against Man City. He obviously got an injury in the warm-up. Arsenal still assessing that injury. And uh, we'll find out later on in the week the extent of it. Um, disappointing for Arsenal, disappointing from Holding for Holding uh, to miss out. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. We'll get probably should be getting an update on Rob Holding around Wednesday, I would say, in terms of how he is and how he's handled reacting to that injury. Callum Chambers is back in full training though um, after his cruciate knee ligament injury. Arsenal probably going to ease him back into action, but it is certainly a boost to have Callum back. And interesting when you think that before his injury, Callum was starting. Uh, under Mikel Arteta who did rate him liked him a lot liked the way he came out with the ball how comfortable he was on the ball all the kind of things that Mikel Arteta likes in a centre-back Callum Holding does possess maybe apart from pace um, and often when you come back from these crucial ligament injuries those, that pace lack of pace can be an even bigger problem um, so it'll be interesting to see whether Arteta uses Callum too quickly after he returns um, 25 man squad for the Premier League needs to get submitted tomorrow. We've already seen the Europa League squad, the bigger missions from that, Ozil and Socrates. I expect those two to miss out again when it comes to the Premier League. We will get confirmation of that after tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't, for you Ozil fans, and I know there's plenty of you, there's even guys who have started a petition to try and get him back in um, at the moment. I think you're going to be a bit disappointed. Don't, I'm not expecting Meza Ozil to make that Premier League squad. And uh, that will, it, once the news comes through about that and it's confirmation, that will mean for definite that Ozil will not be playing for Arsenal again until um, 2021 at the earliest, but more than likely probably ever, ever again. Because obviously new squad lists need to be submitted after the January transfer window, but it's very unlikely Ozil suddenly going to come back into the picture having been frozen out already. So that will be a disappointment for Ozil fans and well, some Arsenal fans as well because... We've got to talk about the issue with Arsenal and creativity is a big, big issue at the moment. Whether Ozil would be the saviour of that look, I don't, I, I'm not going to sit here and say Mesut Ozil would have, Arsenal could have won that game if Mesut Ozil been playing at the weekend against Manchester City. Look, Ozil's been to Manchester City many, many a times and done pretty much nothing each time at the Etihad, so it's not like he's got a good record up there playing against him. But Arsenal are certainly struggling creative, creativity-wise. There's no doubt about that. You look at the stats and they're pretty stark. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang has had six shots so far in the Premier League this season. That ranks him 45th in the Premier League. When you compare to the guys at the top, Harry Kane, 25. Mo Salah, 25. Alexander Mitrovic at Fulham, 21. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, 20. Neil Malpe, 18. Sadio Mane, 17. The list goes on and on. I mean, you've got Leonardo Trossard, 13. Danny Ings, 12. James Rodriguez, 12. Jarrod Bowen, and uh, West Ham 12 and then Aubameyang 6. He's only had 6 shots in the Premier League this season. I mean that is a very worrying statistic really. I mean you what you need you got one of your best strikers in Europe and you've only created 6 opportunities for him. And some of those opportunities he's created by himself as well, to be fair, and taking and shots from distance. So that is the big issue for Arsenal. The creativity problem is not going away. In fact, it's probably getting worse when you consider he has had six shots um, so far this season. Arsenal have had 41 shots in the Premier League, efforts on goal in the Premier League. That puts them fourth from bottom behind Burn. Uh, only teams behind them are Burnley, Crystal Palace and West Brom. Um, and I think that says an awful lot. You look at Liverpool, they've had 97 shots. That's more than double what Arsenal have had so far this season. And if that doesn't change, Arsenal can continue to struggle to win games uh, because they're just not going to create enough chances. Willian has created the most for Arsenal with seven. Then Aubameyang, the second. You know what, you want Aubameyang on the end of the chances created, but he's actually created the second most amount of chances with six. And... Um, you know, that's just not, that's something that Mikel Arteta has to fix. He's aware of it and it has to fix. I'm hoping the arrival of Tom and Party will do that because it will eventually lead to formation change where Arsenal can go with four at the back, uh, have an extra man in midfield, free up possibly an extra attacker as well because Arsenal have got to start improving their supply line to the forwards because if they don't, they're not going to score enough goals and they're going to continue to struggle. There's no doubt Mikel Arteta has improved Arsenal as a team. He's improved them in their shape. They look a much better unit. I thought they were great in terms of being a unit against Manchester City, who are a fantastic side, normally cut Arsenal apart. They never really did that this time. Um, 
and Mikel has got Mikel has got them well drilled. They work as a team. They work as a unit, and they're very solid defensively, or, or solid defensively. Maybe not very, um, but now they've got to sort it out going forward because if they don't do that, they're going to continue to struggle. And if you're going to leave out a player like Mesut Özil, who obviously has got his faults, there's no doubt about that, but he does create chances even now when he's not at the peak of his powers. And if you're going to leave a player like him out. You've got, to, you've got to sort of back it up, really. And at the moment, Arsenal aren't backing it up. And until they do, it means they're always going to be that question about Ozil bubbling around in the background. Um, so that's something that's going to be, have to improve. And you would hope it will improve, certainly once they can go to four at the back. And hopefully Thomas Partey will do that. So that's, enough, that's it for the video today. Anything else that happens, I will be back on to update you as soon as possible as news continues to break throughout the week and we build up to the Rapid Vienna game and the Leicester City game on uh, Sunday. Like I said, Mikel Arteta and a player doing a press conference on Wednesday. I will be all over that. So please do head over to my social media channels at Charles underscore Watts on Twitter or on Facebook as well. And head over to goal.com. We'll have all your Arsenal news um, for you. And uh, I will drop into the description below just a piece I did after the game against Manchester City on Monday, looking at the Willian experiment and why it didn't quite work out for Mikel Arteta. So thank you everyone for watching. Appreciate your time as always. And I will speak to you very, very soon.